Welcome to this special edition, Doug Stanhope, Christine Levine Swapcast, direct from the Red Lion Lounge, Portland, Oregon. Featuring Doug Stanhope, Christine Levine, Andy Andrist, and Amy Bingaman. We join our show, already in progress. Here at the Red Lion, because I remembered we had to check in. We always say, oh, your room won't be ready for 30 minutes. So we came back down to this bar, half a mile away. Right. Which and, is the Red uh, Lion. The Red Lion, gorgeous, if I have not already said this. It's in my top five fucking day drinking bars that are attached to hotels. Well, not only was your room not ready, the bar was closed. The bar was closed. We've been over that. It wasn't going to be open until four. That was the big deal breaker. That's what pissed me off at first, where I go, can I just get out of this? And Cunty Jarvis said, no, sir, there's no refunds. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't. Andy, just let it, let it go. You're, you're creating more problems, dropping that mic all over the floor, then you're helping. That was a walk-off. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, uh, so we came here, then we went back there, and that's when we uh, tried to, uh, yeah, we, we found a million problems. Like, all right, I'm getting the fuck out of this room. I'm not paying for this room. Right. It's 62 bucks. It's not a big fucking deal. But it was the principle of the thing, and it was how cunty Jarvis was. So, and a number of other things. Uh, but like you know what? Machines, no ice like machine. That. It's a cunty chain because I stopped in there and they had no coffee at noon, and the guy was like kind of smug about it. Like, <laughs> well, no, we take the coffee away at noon. <laughs> like, fuck you, Ramadan. Ram- You're right. They are yeah. Ramadan. It's, the ISIS. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's between yeah between noon and four. It's all Mormon. No caffeine. No alcohol. I don't know what he's got going We're on. We're a dry there. hotel. <laughs> yeah, dry. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. not even ice. <laughs> We're a shitty, depressing even place, our but water. we don't serve coffee. <laughs> yeah. Be out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don't yell at me. <laughs> so, uh, so we check out. I booked this place. Fuck you. I'll get my money back through Expedia. I can beat those Indians down, and I couldn't. <laughs> and Bingo's turned over some uh, tall ficus plants on the way out. Trees. God, you guys were fucking a mess. Yeah. Fuck those fake you were plants. Pissed off. <laughs> I was pissed, and then I called Fuckface Jarvis afterwards, and I go, you know what? First of all, you know, the, the downstairs reeks of fucking weed smoke. I threatened to, hey, let's bring the police in. Right. And, uh, and then, you, well, you tweeted about a bunch of it. Well, afterwards, that's when I got back mm-hmm. here. That's when I met the two old ladies that were here. And they go, we recognize you from the lobby there. And uh, mm-hmm. then they were telling me how the, the Jarvis was giving some old man shit for whatever reason, saying, sorry, your room, uh, you, you're, you're not going to have that room. And he's like, well, I booked it weeks ago. And uh, what? And he's like, I- I'm sorry, sir. He's like, I have no place to go. I booked this on- online. And I told those ladies that it's better off they didn't get bed bugs. The, you just have to drop bed bugs. <laughs> the, the word bed bugs cures any. Like, if you put bed bug in a Yelp review, everything else that you could say positive about the place, you give it a 10-star yeah. review out of five and go, Jarvis was the sweetest guy. It was He was so charming. I didn't even mind the the the, the cacophony of bed bugs marching up my urethra in the night the, and the tickle peas it gave me in the morning. It was fine because Jarvis was the sweetest bird-looking... <laughs> The Ramada ends a lot like the Hotel California minus the pink champagne on ice. It's just a <laughs> shithole you're fucking stuck in and your wife's there and the fucking dogs and shit. Yeah, it's a fucking... The, it's called... They. You know why it's called the Ramada? They shortened it from Ramadan, which is, uh, you know, something for the Muslims. They're, <laughs> in fact, isn't our... Andy, pro- that would work if we had racist <laughs> listeners. Oh, no. I, Put that in a Yelp review. <laughs> no, you don't need to use Mus- that on the Muslim. Did, Musileums. Did, I'm sorry. Did I say it wrong? Did, <laughs> did they... Did they, um, didn't they try to like say they were going to call the police or something because well, they were pissed off at well, you? Then Cause you a- tweeted it. After or, I, ta- I then I talked to him after I booked this place, we came back to the good place, the red lion, top five drinking bars of all time. I should know the name of this bar, but it's the fucking red lion bar at the Portland, red lion Oregon. airport. You can't even access it without driving through like a parking lot. And it lot. says it's there's online or track betting. It used to be off track, track betting. Track they betting don't have that anymore. But yeah, yeah, we Weird. can we can race each oh, other no, around. No, I'm sorry. Money on it. <laughs> we had money on how late you'd be, and I took the over that you'd be over 40 minutes late, and you were an you were hour, right. full hour. 
Exactly. Bam, on the here's, money. Here's, like clockwork, you're an hour late. Yes. Uh, so I put that, I, I called Jarvis, and then I said, you know what I'm going to do, since you don't want to, if you don't want to refund my money, you want to be a little cunt man about this fucking 60 bucks, then, uh, like, it comes out of his pocket. Right. You know, you're fucking, you're not Mr. Ramada. <laughs> you, you just, you're being a cunt because you have a fucking name tag that gives you authority. You have a bigger name tag than the other guys and a different colored Oxford shirt. Right. So I said, Bummer. well, what I'll do then is I will give uh, my <laughs> hotel room keys to the homeless and I'll let them stay here because I'm staying at the fucking red line, bitch. And he said, well, if they do any damage to that room, I'm going to charge your credit card. I go, I don't even know if they'll be in the room. They might be out front in the hallway cooking sausages over an open <laughs> flame. Not my problem. Right. So then he said, well, the sir, now you're not only uh, kicked out of the hotel, you're also still not getting a refund. So uh, so I went, all right, we're going to have to put this to the killer termites, which I hate. Listen, my fucking Twitter base, I, yeah. I know you're fucking relentless, and I hate to so use you for petty $60 skirmishes with a fucking beak-nosed fucking but they failure through. man. They but we did. They came through. <laughs> I just put on Twitter, this guy, not, not only was he refusing, me a re refund, but these two old ladies, we met the two old ladies that had a beef there and yeah. also witnessed an old guy, and they what's wrong with that man? And uh, so I go, I took a picture of the two old ladies, I said, <laughs> they was also a bully to these old ladies, yeah. maybe you can help straighten this out with the phone number of the Ramada, which you know their phone did not stop ringing. I had, even like Duncan Trussell tweeted me, and he goes, I'm trying to get through, I can't get through. <laughs> 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 It was like saying Marilyn caller Manson's seven. Manager. Yeah, the oh, tour man. manager of Manson. Like, I'm <laughs> fucking calling this cocksucker yes. right now. What was really funny is I, when I dropped you guys off and we caused a mini stir up just to the room and then you guys were just going to be here to relax and read. And I was like, they're not going to stay. It's trouble. It's just <laughs> it's fucking. Trouble. It smelled like trouble. But that's the lobby of the Ramada. It smells like something and you try to piece it together and it's like meth, and urine, and Jarvis. Jarvis's film. I don't know sweat. if this is part of what got uh, fucked up when we were talking about it before, but that fucking thick weed smell for an entire block of the first floor. I don't care about weed, but if you're allowing people to smoke weed that blatantly in your hotel and you don't give a fuck, I know. that means it ain't Willie Nelson on the other side of room 120. Well, it's also that, not that, July that. in Oregon. Because <laughs> in July, we're going to be smoking weed in the fucking Ramada. That's for the losers. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? If you've stayed there, I'll, I'll, I can suggest if you've stayed there and had a bad experience like me, leave a Yelp, a Yelp review. It's a kind of if hotel you've where you can't even bugs come from in. that place. Definitely make sure people it. know uh, know about that. Open no, source. Don't do that. Open source. You can't quite figure out where you got them, but you suspect. Go ahead, yelp it up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a passive aggressive. Do something with your life. Be drugs. Andy's wife has the Edgar Winter Group. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm yeah. I don't know if it's a long long term. It is a long term. So I'm auditioning ladies. Uh, to be the new wife, Wait and I want, and I, uh, I, I, I want to oh, go with shit. Uh, Junior uh, Stopka right now. Japanese woman that can right. do a Japanese woman that can do sushi, uh, and that's number one. And then four. we're gonna take a quick break right now. You're listening to the Doug Stanhope, Christine Levine Squadcast. So, uh, so eventually we're gonna get a CD. So I'll plug the shit out of it. People, people do ask me even like still like I just got a tweet about it the other day. When's it coming out? I'm like, oh no, we're fucking working on it. I got sick. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so we're going to do that, and then I have an audiobook coming out of my um, Corn Clark essays and stuff that I fucking did. And, um, is that now? Is that self published as a book anywhere? Yeah, no, it's not a real book, but we're just going to do the audiobook. I already wrote the essays down, you know. Why make a real book now? <laughs> Who cares? All right, yeah. So we're just going to sell the tracks like record tracks. Good, you know? sell so it. If they want to hear, a, Fuck hear yeah. a story, then they can listen to me yell about it nobody read you know what I, I wish there was i wish there was anymore. some kind of company online that uh that sold uh like books that other people read for you so you don't have to but it doesn't <laughs> exist so there we go no sponsors <laughs> like something audible but that's on a dot com but no such fucking company God, exists. If only somebody would 
<laughs> Something audible, but a dot com. Right. You can't, I'm clueless. It's too bad the Maybe blind can't read. I don't you know. know. Just like Joe Rogan talks about, yeah, when are we going to have spacesuits and jet packs so we can zoom yeah, all over? Yeah, flying cars. Yeah, when are we going to have someone that reads books reads book and then you can you. just download it online? So that you don't have to do don't it. Don't know anybody I, I who like it anything. Out. I feel like this country has just gotten used to squirt cheese. <laughs> And I also am on Portlandia. By Portlandia, you're, you've been on how many episodes of that um, now? Like, uh, I don't know, like seven or eight now. As probably. much as you can stand to watch in a as couple much more. As you were, you, I know, I know. You I, have, but I was on Andy, like take off episodes. your goddamn hat so you have some peripheral vision I was so on, we can like. I was on like. There we go. Yeah, there you took there off you that. Go. I was on like three episodes this year, and I had my own episode with um. Um, you know, okay, my, 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 my TV husband, you know, that guy, like, we play the swinger couple, like the perverty couple, because right. that's a good call for me. Um, and that guy wrote the movie Falling Down. He doesn't know I know this. So sometimes I'm like, so Kurt Russell. Oh. <laughs> whatever, Michael Douglas. Michael whatever. Douglas, yeah, yeah I was going to say Douglas. Kurt yeah, Russell, no, no, Falling no. Down. I'm like, Michael Douglas, he seems like a okay actor. <laughs> I'm just throw it out there and just kind of let it dangle in conversation. All right. He just doesn't pick it up. It's really funny. What, what was the Bobcat one? It was like falling down, but with no plot, which was good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Killing or that. murder was in the yeah, theme. Yeah, yeah. I, it, yeah. It's, it, it's Bill him Murray doing brother? everything that we talk about right. at, at the so bar. Do, yeah. With yeah. That, actually very little plot. It's just mm-hmm. a lot of murder that you go, all right, one. this is, the movie's as good as the trailer, only longer. <laughs> but it's not better. No. Where the Michael Douglas is like, where, all right, stop with the, uh, he has a backstory. Yeah. Just get to the killing people. Get to the killing people. Yeah, his car, his car broke down. That's enough for me. <laughs> that would, I know. That's if what I had I a mean. weapon or a bat, yeah, my but fucking car. But that's why I love, I love my, um, this guy because, like, he's so, that's a big deal writing that movie. It's a big deal. And, you know, he's, In the main, he's so wrong. modest about it. Anyway, so I was on Portlandia a bunch, and um, I got a great, horrible review from um, the uh, AV Club. The AV Club said that I was, you know, muted. That's what they called me. Muted? Yeah. What does that well, even yeah, mean? It means that, like, you know, I was, like, really not uh, not funny, just toned down and really not whatever. Because, of course, that's what everybody thinks of me when they see me. It's like, muted. I don't, I don't even know what that means. It was so fucking stupid. No, the, uh, the AV Club reviewed two of the episodes that I was in and both times fucking hated me. And I was like, I don't know who I fucked over there or well, what, what I did. What TV show AV gets a Club fucking a review of just a single episode? No, I... the AV Club does it all the time. And it's super, they, they, they review like almost every TV show. Well, if you're, if you're going to review every episode of Portlandia, yeah. that means you have to want to out cunts the cunts. Right. Like, all right, right. you know what? People who don't like anything watch Portlandia. Right. So we have to not like anything that people who hate everything like. Exactly. I remember. I remember a tweet where. No, that's right. Where I said, "Oh, I had an idea for a Portlandia script, which is more than they've ever had." (laughs) (laughs) But it's basically about. That's all Portland is about right now. Is about like hating things. Even like, oh God, like I'm struggling with even being here as a comedian because like I have this joke that I want to tell about these two homosexuals that call the black guy a nigger. And I can't even tell that joke anywhere in the city because I'm niggers? afraid of losing friends. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I'm afraid of losing friends. And this is a great story. This black guy parked in a handicapped spot and these two gay handicapped guys were like gonna call him out on it. And my son and I were like, I told Christopher, I go, oh, let's watch this because this is gonna get great. <laughs> these two homos are gonna lose their mind. Handicap fight. Yeah, and then and then um, turns out the, the black guy is a handicap. He runs into the store for um, some Bud Light while he's on his way to a little girl's birthday party. Product yeah. placement. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, I know that he's on his way to a little girl's birthday party. The real like, story is Rolling Rock, but I made her change it to Bud Light to <laughs> appease the sponsors. But we're not saying black. Nothing and says handicap. rock and roll like Bud no, Light. Enjoy the... Marilyn Manson. He was black and handicapped. Or no, he wasn't. Was no, black? he was. Okay. Part yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I've got this whole story about what happened and the fight that ensued and how that, how I observed, you know, these liberal gay guys be the total racist fucks against this dude. And I cannot tell that joke. Here. Well, we'll hear that on the third album, the really racy <laughs> one. Okay. No, I'm going to say, I'm doing it. I'm doing the Vean Large, a trilogy. <laughs> 
<laughs> dirtier and dirtier. Andy, <laughs> uh, you wanted to sell, uh, pile I, on the uh, uh, the depression here? Uh, yeah. She's, so, ru- she's got rheumatoid arthritis. She's and got a rheumatoid. Fifty-seven-year-old son that uh, still lives at and, home. <laughs> and and I used to have I used to have the I got molested by Pat Splain, yeah. m- m- molester. And because I was molested and post-traumatic for years, I'd be fucking, I'd have an empathy well. And anytime I'd hear a sad story, I'd fucking weep like a cunt. Like, oh shit, that fucking, I'd see a ad for some, uh, he's away from this kid and I'd cry or whatever, but it was just misplaced emotion. And now I hear about somebody with rheumatoid arthritis and I know Sean, I don't care. My wife has a brain disease and it takes every bit of compassion I can well up or read about in Hallmark cards. And I can be there and, and be, okay, so re, after the Marilyn Manson concert, I picked my wife up from chemotherapy conveniently in the same town. <laughs> For the record, this brain disease is something that almost nobody Sponsored has. by Erdheim Chester disease. Nobody gets in yeah. the brain. They yeah. get it, but the, not in their brain. The NFL ain't going to wear an Erdheim Chester colored jersey. Let me, <laughs> let me just say, this is so much sadder than my situation. Andy's situation is so much sadder that um, years ago when this first happened to your wife, Andy, I remember you talking to me about it. And I said, yeah, everything sucks. And you said to me, you know, when I want to kill myself, I'm not going to call you to talk me out of it. Because I was like, yeah, this is awful. I was validating yeah. you. When I, when I wait, was wait, 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 I'm going to fuck it up. I don't know who said what, but at some point, Andy told you that he was weeping because of his wife, and you said, oh, you're chemo sobbing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chemo so, sobbing. I was getting to that. After the Marilyn Manson concert, I was maybe a little shaky because I was excited to see Marilyn Manson, as you would be. But I'm picking my wife up. A couple hours later, after waking up, and the chemotherapy, and I have to be there. People who get chemo, or it's like PMS with steroids, and you throw in cuntiness, and uh, that's what you get. And I left her luggage sitting as I drove off. Was like I had to smoke the weed. You picked her up. Yeah. First of all, let me back up. Andy's <laughs> the one who dropped us off at the Ramada. Right. After we had a cocktail here, waiting for our room, dropped us off there, and I'm like, "What time do you have to pick her up?" He's like. It doesn't really matter. They just wheel her out whenever. She's just fucking getting <laughs> chemotherapy. She doesn't know where the fuck she is. The one that she was still hooked up to the IV. I'm like, inconsiderate. <laughs> that is some shit, right? Like I texted you an hour ago saying I'm on my way. And I'm she's having still a Bloody hooked. Mary. You know, get unhooked. I'll be yeah. there in a while. We're day drinking and you're hooked up to an IV, you inconsiderate motherfucker. Uh, but I try to be patient. Uh, but I left her luggage, and that's why I'm here, because I left her luggage, and it involved a lot of weeping, a lot of weeping, and the oh. hospital oh. threw her luggage in the dumpster, and then she, she I go, what is, was it anything important? And, uh, yeah, every fucking t-shirt was important and had sentimental value, it and was, I was uh, an the asshole. The bag was all clothing, but it was the, that was the black uh, blouse you bought me for my birthday. Everything yeah. mattered. Everything oh, had no, some sentimental it was that, value. No, that thing you and Delaney got me that I really liked for my birthday, but we can chemotherapy like you can't even go, well, we'll replace it at Walmart. And folks, yeah. <laughs> folks at home, that's a two and a half hour drive each Back. way yeah. to go through a dumpster where the hospital said, yeah, we did find a bag like that, but it was just closed, so we threw it in the dumpster. So yeah. Yeah, a hospital said they, we dumpster. just chucked it in the dumpster. That's so weird. And so I thought I was over this behavior, uh, but I just went and resumed punching myself in the face a lot. Like, I was like, God damn it, you stupid mother. But it t- a few hours ago, I was having fun with Marilyn Manson and Doug and Bingo. <laughs> and then I'm back with Chemo Head, and I'm punching myself in the garage thinking, what do I got around here I can die with? <laughs> Punching bag ain't gonna do it. It was such a great. I don't. I don't know if anyone was aware of the moment outside of yourselves, but when you showed up, Christine shows up at the bar with Andy, and we're all. She's telling me about her rheumatoid arthritis and how fucked she is as a human being. Yeah. And Andy's telling Christine about the fucking chemotherapy, and that's where I heard the chemo sobby story. Yeah. And we're and we're la- he's like cracking jokes wise. Like we're talking about a day of playing, you know, company yeah. softball in front of a bartender. Where you're talking about that, and he's talking about his wife dying, yep. and we're talking about how shit faced we've been for three days. Well, off here's the wagon. And- here's the shit too. The fucking shit is I I clip dandelions, and I put a nice bouquet together every time she goes up to the chemo. I know she's gonna be flat on her back and needs a fucking flower to stare at. Uh, it was because I was loaded. You're listening to the Dick Stanhope, Christine the Bean Squabcast. 
All right, that's uh, yeah. This is the last segment, and God knows how long it'll last. I have to plug shit. Uh, the Canadian tour is in the works. The UK tour. We just booked the Apollo Hammersmith, and it's uh, almost sold out in the first two days. The biggest which, club you ever play is the yes. Apollo Hammersmith, and we're halfway sold out more already. More than that. Yeah, uh, more it, than halfway sold out. By the time out. you hear it, it will be sold out. And everyone keeps sending me stuff. If you're sending me, like, hey, come to my club, and Hennigan's on top of all that. And everyone is saying, well, is that the only... I get a lot of these. You're only playing one fucking gig in the... U no, that's the first gig I booked. Right. We'll be booking other gigs. I don't know if we'll be to Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in the fucking major ones anyway. But you hate the UK. Why do you keep going back? Because they fucking want... They the pay gig, you. The gigs are Money. good. Yeah, the gigs are good. Being yeah. there. It's, just... it's the same reason you don't have a cell phone. Shut up. Money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> I'm going to go home and I'm going to fucking turn on my cell phone. I got money because people the started a PayPal. <laughs> the, e the, the nice emails I get from the UK are fucking brutal, more brutal than the hecklers that don't like me. I know. Oh, fucking oh. cunt. You're only playing one fucking... That's the only one I know about. I find out about these gigs the same way you do. Like, Brian will put it on my fucking Twitter because yeah, he knows okay. I was drunk yeah. when he texted me. Hey, put this on your Twitter. And then I, if I don't do it immediately, he'll put it out. And then I go on my Twitter. I go, oh, fuck. Look, I'm I mean, doing a gig. And by the way, if, if, if something just went on sale and it says it's sold out when you try to buy tickets, check again because... We try to use brown paper tickets exclusively. And the bigger the venue, the less likely it is that we're able to do that. Because most of the monster fucking venues are in some kind of corporate shackles, okay. some contract with a fucking Live Nation or a, what, what's the old one that was the- Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster. Yeah. So we can get an allotment of brown paper tickets, a small amount that don't have fuck you rapist ticketing fees and then the rest hey you should have been there first when we had a small sliver of brown paper tickets so when you see sold out if it just went on sale it's probably just the brown paper tickets that are sold out now go through the venue and find the ticket master or whatever and yeah you're gonna get a bad beat on a fucking fee because i can't change the goddamn world i figured that out I cannot beat corporate America <laughs> all by myself when I spend most of my days sitting in a fucking off-track betting bar that doesn't even have off-track betting. You can't, everybody you can't, here, I was down Santa, what do you mean? You can't beat <laughs> corporate America. You can only hope to contain Jarvis. Right. I don't know what I'm doing it's for these tours. one tour. Jarvis at yeah. a time. Yeah, I am That's going America. to the UK and hopefully fucking Europe too. Uh, and I have to write this dumb book. That announcement just came out. That's the one oh I've been teasing, God. What's saying the no one cares. What's the yeah. dumb book? You got I a title? You got a fucking book deal. You got a title? I have a, a working title, but I'm not, I'm not gonna even going to put it out there. Look, but. I have seen... Look, so who's the, first, the, who's the, okay, okay, who's the deal? No. The first five years that I knew you, you didn't know my name. How are you remembering? All yeah, this? no, he's. <laughs> I'm, you called me Mamu. You introduced me as Mamu at my own. It's being I still call you Mamu. It, <laughs> it's being ghost. It's being ghost written by his uh, dead brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to call them I'm all up. Doing a lot of it, blotto biography style. Right. Where I'm just calling up, like, all right, what were the specifics with that? Yeah. Mother was a fucking played a titty dancer aside Tanya Lee Davis. Yes, yes. I for P. Diddy. Yes. In some MTV music. And I'm like, I remember all right, that. now I'm going to have to reach that. out to Tanya Lee Davis and find out the details because I remember oh. it happened. So, yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to be making a lot of you phone gotta calls. Get close to, to old Tanya friends. Like, how are you going to get it all? Yeah. Like, all right. There's some shit. I didn't even. Like, I, th I think you're going to have to travel. Know this stuff because the through line, a lot of it will be course auto well, it's all autobiographical auto -erotic. but uh mother is the through line yeah you know, with the you know from hey. the beginning of her fucking jerking off dogs to the you know the assisted suicide yeah. yeah but i didn't even my mother was so difficult to listen to that she was just a blathering fucking 
she'd tell you about an eight hour day at scale. No, I like remember. Like you had to spend yeah. eight hours to listen to the whole, and then I had to go, I get a fucking park and this cunt in front of me, didn't know how to <laughs> fucking park. It's just like a six point turn. I'm like, you're yeah, fucking, all right. Chapter I 15, I hate I, the fucking Russians. Can I just tell a mother story one, one yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was <laughs> staying with Patty one time and we went over, uh, you know, LA Patty. And I went At over- At the time I lived in an apartment. I, okay. uh, Patty still lives in hers and Hennigan now lives in mine. They're yes. rent control places in West Hollywood. And uh, That's so when I moved live. mother out, she moved into mine. I moved down to what is now Patty. So it's, uh, I think it's a dozen apartments in yes. one building. And there's three yeah. apartments on the top floor facing out on the street. Brian is now on the right hand side and Patty's at the left hand side. Right. And um, and so pa Patty and I went over. Okay, so we got invited to go to the Magic Castle, Patty and I. But I didn't have any shoes, and so she says, <laughs> let's, "Let's just gloss over that. Why you had no shoes? Where was your phone? In her shoes. <laughs> she didn't have either one. I go didn't ahead. have any. Let's just gloss over. I didn't have any good shoes." Did you not have a shoe company that could no, give you I shoes? Like I just, I made it to LA with no shoes. I don't know how I didn't have shoes, but I didn't have any shoes. And so Patty's brilliant idea is like, let's go to Mother's because she's going to have. She's a hoarder. She's a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to have shoes. And I said, yeah, but she's a hoarder. She's the size of a little bird. I am a giant lady with size 10 feet that are wide. There's no way this lady's going to have. Mother's not going to have size 10 giant shoes for me. And she said, oh. She might. <laughs> you don't know. Oh. So, we, so we walk in here. We go knock on your mom's door. And mother opens the door. I was like, she's so happy to see us. She's got company. She says, oh, have a seat. Because she's so, I don't know, high on NyQuil or whatever. But she's super, super And light. doesn't realize all her seats are covered in covered stacks in of shit. shit. Yeah. So I was just like, sit. I don't know where to go. But OK. So I move some stuff. And we're all polite. You know, and then I ask your mom. I go, I go, hey, uh, why, why, Bonnie, why do you have um, bunk beds in your living room? And she goes, well, you never know who's gonna come over. <laughs> she was, she was dead yeah. set on. Well, you know, in case I have company. Yeah. Who, first of all, there's <laughs> stacks of boxes and cat hair covered shit on yeah. the top bunk. Yeah. In case you wanted to stay in a 300 square foot apartment right. on a filthy bunk bed that's just jammed she never wall knows to wall. Who's gonna come over? Right. Okay. So then. And you never know when someone's gonna have. <laughs> size 10 wide shoes. Yes. Yeah. And so I literally <laughs> just went over there and I go, I go, hey, mother, do you have these? We need, I need some shoes to go to the Magic Castle tonight. And she goes, I have just the thing. And she went into that back fucking bedroom and she came out with these Birkenstocks for me, <laughs> size 10 wide Birkenstocks that I have to this day. And it was so funny because Patty's just like, you're just validating her hoarding. You know it's that. It's absolutely right? true. That's yeah. all you're no. doing. <laughs> she, by, just by you're being around her, her she fucking made you I one of the <laughs> one of the few times I road trip with mother she made me tell her she was okay <laughs> we went into a dollar store type strip mall in Florida yeah. and and, uh, and it was right before mother fell into drugs again <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's like hours before <laughs> but we we're at a dollar store type oh, thing and there yeah. was the fucking dumbest novelty t-shirt you ever fucking saw like you know like Kiss me, I'm Irish, only dumber, like fucking yeah. Florida style. Uh, like, you know. Been there, done that. Yeah. yeah. And and, uh, and she goes, what do you think for Doug? And I go, I think Doug would hate that shirt. And she goes, well, maybe for later. Like, <laughs> maybe like, when he gets older. But here's the fucking creepiest shit she bought there. She bought Vagisil at a dollar store. And she goes, what do you think? Like, I have an opinion. I think, you know, I mean, if it was going in my con, I'd want it to be fresher. But uh, <laughs> but it's like a hoard. She was going to yeah. hoard like five tubes of it. Oh, we, I know. We, when uh, Renee and I did the first D hoard on her place when we had to put her in detox yes. and yeah, we, we were counting how many batteries in the hundreds Tooth of batteries brushes. toothbrushes yeah. in the you know 78 toothbrushes in case someone stays over and they don't have a tooth who's staying over at your house you don't have any fucking friends you're a 60 year old woman and zero people that call you or you call oh uh, do you know though i did that one time like my son and i were at the grocery store and i go to reach for some uh, canned pineapple and he said no stop it and i said what are you talking about i just what if i run out of pineapple and he goes just trust me 
and let's go home right now. And yeah. I said, okay. Yeah. So we go home, and then he puts me in the living room and turns on television and just says, sit here, Mama, and then I'll call you in. And then he turns, like, he opens up the pantry door, and then he calls me in, and he had faced my entire pantry. All the pineapples? I had 25 cans of pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what is wrong with you? We wanted to talk you. You can buy a phone with this money. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what is wrong with you? You keep thinking hey, that you're going to run T- out of pineapple. T-Mobile now has the pineapple plan. <laughs> it's $1.99 for a phone. I do have to catch myself now because I do overbuy shit. Uh, it, moving to a I small town. Oh, 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 I, uh, moving to a small town made me realize why Walmart is so big in the shitty parts of the middle of the country because... Buying cheap shit is a form of entertainment in town. Yeah, that's nothing great. else. That's can why do. you go to any Goodwill, any any Value Village, anything. It's full of Mexicans or people just like you know with limited budgets. But they, you, we still want to shop as a people. It's so we great. see you know it's we can't beautiful. hunt, yeah. we can't kill anything, but we can still get a terry cloth. Shirt Portland for a is a great night. example. Portland is a town yes. where everyone's out doing shit. I don't drive a car, I ride a bike. That was the bartender here last right. night. And we go to things and we go to shows, but when you live in fucking you know Bump zip up, city yeah. fucking arkansas there is no good show there is no. nothing there's a fishing pole if you can afford bullets you can kill something cute or you can buy shit at the dollar store well it's, it's so kind of it's kind of like joe rogan's thing where you only kill what you you eat or whatever but that's it seems like people still need that thing where you consume even though you're fucking broke as shit, you can still go to somewhere and get a shirt for 99 cents. It's a but sick that's fucking what country. what Mother did. And you know what you can also do? You can buy Doug Stanhope tickets to yes! <laughs> hey, Toronto no! and uh, the... Doug Stanhope has a lot of merch, but the greatest line I've ever heard... I've, done, I've been around Doug Stanhope for years. The best line I ever heard from Doug Stanhope, and, and it's why his mother fell back into drugs. <laughs> In Florida, he says, uh, we've got Coke and Mother's Holding. Anyway, thanks. Yeah, for that, that'll comedy. be in the book for sure. That's actually, I have a notebook now of, the, of just shit I have to write down from mother. I, I think I'm going to have to disappear. This is going to be the second 30 days in the hole where I have to go away to write because at home there's just too many. Even the fucking 30 days in that trailer, my pets found me. So my dogs eat the barking above the fucking trailer. On, you try sobering up around Meatwig. <laughs> he can't do it. Yeah, but so I want to go in the hole too because I want to go in the. Fat I know camp. you keep tweeting that you want to. You can't. Can you put me you in the can't fat rehab. Camp? You it's can't. a 1962 vintage trailer. You think that bed's built to hold you? You you snap that thing in fucking two. Every time you tweet me, I go, I'll just pretend you, I didn't you, see it. You Come can't. On. You can't. You can't make a conscious choice to quit arthritis. <laughs> I just want. No, I mean I wanted to stop eating for two seconds because I can't. I can't. Arthritis. This, Shouldn't this your fingers arthritis. hurting be that much motivation? Uh, you, when you're so, gripping the look, sandwich, it hurts. I could. I could put you on a fucking good diet. I so, What is it? Come, <laughs> come diet. Num num. Well, you've fucking been on that. Vitamix. The Vitamix is the <laughs> best. I gotta thing get in the world. one of those. I think it's three hundred eighty-six. Doug bucks, Stanhope, can you can you get your people who uh, listen to this to buy Christine Levine no, a juicer and a phone? She needs to be charity. supervised <laughs> and, and supervised like Guantanamo. Supervised. That's what I mean. That's why I want to get her an orange rehab. jumpsuit and the rest will take care of itself. And have only my meals brought to me on a little tiny Nothing. Nobody delivers. Oh damn it! Does he even? But you can eat all the time if you eat decent shit. Just eat all the fucking time. Have yeah, you tried just, making peace with your Lord figure? No, you know what's happened to me? This is this is what's happened to me. Is that, like, I've gained 20 pounds since I've gotten this stuff, and I was fat already. But um, the reason, I think it's so funny because it's like, oh, you you know, you think that you wanted to lose weight and move around. Well, now you have a disease where you can't move around. <laughs> and then I just say, I'm fucking but eating. terrifying. Yeah, I can fucking eat. And then, um, so then I keep eating and I'm on prednisone, which makes me want to eat fucking more. And now I'm just ridiculously fat. Well, yeah, you can fat. come down to the fuck. You're not yeah. ridiculously fat. You're sexy fat. Shut up. Take off like your goddamn hat. hat. Yeah, take off them pounds. <laughs> no, you. Take off your hat. Oh, the hat again. Oh, I'm, fe- I, I I'm do fetish this. fat. I'm on the hat again. <laughs> I went pants. Well, and you saw the out. girl that I did yes, the uh, yes. hustler oh my uh, God. pictorial with. Yeah, I yeah, like her. She's, she's round. Her, uh, her and the <laughs> other, like freakish, uh, plastic surgery yeah, girl. Yeah, that was weird. We're talking be- between 
pictures. Mm-hmm. What was her fetish? I'll tell the you this. Splashing. Yeah, splash porn. porn. What? Splash mm-hmm. porn. What's yeah. that? Splashing is where they fire great. different it's foodstuffs out of an air cannon at the uh, at fat girl. Do you yeah. remember when we were in a, uh, okay, I won't name names, but Henry Phillips was there. When we're in a, bu- uh, we we're ordering a hooker and you went fat guy and you just wanted a hooker to come feed you. Oh, no, no, she's going to jump on yeah. the fucking bed like girls on trampolines, wasn't it? No, no, but earlier you called it. We had that happen, and we wanted Henry, you know, anyway. But he ain't he, married. you called and you go, I <laughs> yeah. just want you to come and feed me some cake. And this one girl's like, and then she goes, she goes, don't oh, baby, I'll right feed now. you some fucking pie. And Doug goes, uh, don't get with the salty talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did get a hooker. It's the same voice I do for when I have Bingo Bingo's Bingham and voice. Uh, do my, as my co-host. Yeah. And this is my co-host. Uh, Hi, yeah. this is Amy Bingo Bingham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Please. So I you, have a sausage <laughs> finish that I like to eat. Sausage. I ordered a hooker. Gravy, the, the gravy. The hooker we got the was a different one, one and she, she wanted music. And I go, you want music like the girls on trampoline and she goes, yeah, I like that show. And she jumped on the mattress while we played, I think, commercial music. It was awful. Yeah, that was a, that was a long time ago. We just try to help locals wherever we go. We, uh, hey, the Impractical Jokers, I don't know if you saw that, uh, their tour video, but evidently oh. me and Bingo were in it. Oh. Hey, so, hey, and this is a rare thing. I'm not going to kill myself, and I actually have a plug, but I can't maybe find it <laughs> but uh, i'm gonna be in florida fort lauderdale i'm going back to florida this time i'm not being compelled to go there uh someplace in fort lauderdale With chris damon Bates. figler fucking shit i had it on my thing a minute ago and then i looked at porn <laughs> okay anyway i'm gonna be at dante's j- you April look 30th. At porn? hang on dante's. You look no at porn it was just we, it was just on my you thing looked that up when we went to the bathroom and you looked at porn no it was just on there it was just on there amongst other things all right you find that and be quiet and Christine Levine, a, a professional in comparison, where will you be? I'll be a, a headlining Dante's <laughs> April 30th. Hey, Doug. Mm-hmm. 2015. 2015, yes. And uh, myself, Richie Stratton, Whitney Street, and Jimmy Newstetter, and we're all very funny. All right. I might be going to okay. another uh, hemisphere to write this book, uh, but I don't know yet. And Andy Andrews will be at the Crispy Tiki. <laughs> on 418 and 420 if you like rock and roll and you like comedy and you like somebody getting fucked up after a show come out to the whatever i just crispy said earlier tiki. Crispy i think tiki? Cri- crazy oh, chris crazy I don't, it's so crazy i can't tiki fucking in fort lauderdale my, I, my 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 eyesight is shit and it's creepy creepy tiki, creepy tiki. And not crispy he's gonna be at every tiki in fort lauderdale if you got crispy you got thank you for creepy? listening to the christine levine at large <laughs> podcast and the doug Tan- stanhope swap cast and, and the andy andrus non-cast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and listen Bingy again. Bingy Bingy next cast. Oh, cheers, everybody. Thanks. I hope this all worked out well. We'll uh, have more shit. Uh, well, I'm sure we're going to tape something from L.A. before we go to Mexico, before I go to the great place we just came from to go write a book. And don't bring a fucking uh, goat to the new stadium, Wrigley. That didn't make any sense. I know. And that fucking huh? sets the tone. Good night. <laughs>